So the athletic Stuart Mandel put out his way too early top 25. You Sooner fans ain't happy about it. We're going to tell you why you shouldn't even be mad. All that coming up here in just a minute. everybody it's your boy jay here with unfair sports where we take a pensive approach to the sports conversation where we talk ou recruiting ou football college football and honestly sports in general with my co-host jimmy we're going to talk to you all about the athletics top 25 which is way too early and why it's way too early for you all to be upset about it be nice oh boy Jimmy, we, we're going. We're, we're talking more and more, and I'm actually proud of us. We're really getting into these shows, especially going remote and everything. So, thank you for checking us out here on the YouTube's as well as listening to the podcast itself, wherever podcasts are downloaded and listened to. Do me a favor while you're here: hit the like button, subscribe, hit the notification so you can get all the updates, as well as share. Because why sharing is caring. Also, yeah, leave a comment. We're about to talk about OU, baby. Let's talk about OU. So, Jimmy, our starting point on this: Did you see? The upsetness of Sooner fans over the last few days? Yes, I did. They mad. They mad. <laughs> and and <laughs> when we be honest, I get it. I'm going to post some of the, the mad messages that we've seen from here. But mm-hmm. uh, Stuart Mandel, one of the, I think he is the editor-in-chief at The Athletic. Um, yep, of the college football covered side. He's a top guy. Did his way too early post transfer portal top twenty five, and there was a team that was conspicuously absent. Our beloved Sooners, they did not make mm-hmm. the initial his top twenty five on this list, and Sooner fans were pissed. I mean, they were giving it to him. I mean, some people were putting them crack pipe, saying, "Dude." Did you you gave Clemson all this love and they lost as much as us, blah blah blah. Um, and I want to open with this, Sooner fans, don't freak out. Stewart's right. Oh, you should not be in the top twenty-five. Now, before you attack me, you attack Jimmy. <laughs> I'm gonna give Stewart a little props on one thing that he mentioned. He said this because of since the Bethlehem on the twenty-seventh. This is basically in the writing of why he said Oklahoma's not in there. Lost the head coach, two started two five star quarterbacks, top two rushers, four of his top five pass catchers, three of five starting offensive linemen, three of his top four tackles, top three sacks leaders are all gone. So Oklahoma, in a way, is doing uh, what you would do in professional sports, which is basically a rebuild. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's a good thing I want Oklahoma to continuously be underrated I don't want them to be I want them to not be an afterthought but be an afterthought you know what I'm saying because mm-hmm. that 2000 team that won that championship was overlooked that year that championship team was overlooked completely Stoops, second year in, everybody's like, ah, Oklahoma's not going to do anything. They've sucked for years. Got completely overlooked, clamped it down, and went out there and won a national championship. You want them hungry. You want them wanting more. You want them pushing harder. To me, thank you, Stuart, for giving them bulletin board material. Uh, Because R.J. Young gave him a little love. He put him at 23 on his at Fox Sports. I'm cool with Oklahoma being ranked low or out of the top 25. That way, these guys go out there and dominate. Jimmy, what, what did you think about that, uh, that that top 25? That's way too early. Way too uh, early, remember. It's way too early. Yeah. Uh, I very rarely say this, Jay, but I 1,000% agree with you. Uh, I really do think Sooner fans overreacted mm-hmm. to this because this – this Stuart Mandel article, I mean, it's, it's interesting to read his perspective on the teams that are in the top 25. And I think he had OU like just outside the top 25 at like 27, 28. Um, this article is virtually meaningless in a sense. It's, well, it's, it's not completely meaningless because 
what this can do or this type of thinking can do is affect the type of votes they're going to get as far as AP preseason rankings. Mm -hmm. But everything's going to be decided on the field like it always is. So then once the games start, it virtually becomes meaningless. So it's no point in getting this upset. In his tweet about this in response to the type of backlash that he got, he was right with what he said as far as everything that this OU program has lost from coaches to recruits to players with his transfer portal draft who left and went with Lincoln Riley or whatever it is. He's right about all that. I think he underestimates what they have coming in or he doesn't really know the players they have coming in. And I think he underestimates how good this coaching staff already is and how cohesive they already are. So I think he's a bit, he could have paid a little bit more attention to that, but that's neither here nor there. Um, you're right. You want them to be underdogs. You want them to be hungry. You want them. I've, I've said this about OU for years. You want them without the target on their back where they can sneak up on their prey and take them out. That's exactly what you want. And that's exactly the position that they're going to be in. And it's exciting because this team, even, you know, in every college football team from season to season, they're going to be changes, especially with the transfer portal, with mm -hmm. guys going to the NFL or being seniors. And this is their last year, whatever it is. But even more so for this OU team from top to bottom, they're going to be virtually unrecognizable from what they were last year under Lincoln Riley's last season. But that's the thing. We don't really know what this team is going to be. Right. This team could be eight and five. Or they could be the 2022 version of the 19 LSU Tigers, where they just ran through everybody and nobody saw them coming. We don't know exactly what this team is. They don't even know what they are because they haven't hardly even practiced with each other. <laughs> right. So it's okay. All right. It's okay. Don't get upset by this. Don't get bent out of shape. None of this matters until they play games. And we know that this season is bound to be a process. They're not going to go 13 and 0. They're not going to go 14 and 0. It's going to be a process. But if they stick to what? What's that looking for? They're not going to go thirteen and zero. Yeah, but but if they stick to the process that these coaches have and the plan that these coaches have with the talent that they have coming in, eventually, after a couple of years, after three years, they're pushing for a playoff spot. And then once you get in there, you have a really good opportunity, like any other playoff team, in order to win it all. So it's going to take time, but just don't freak out because this won't be the last Stuart Mandel type article that we see. So you can't freak out about it every time we see this. Don't worry about it. Yeah, and I made the face of if everything clicks the way that it seems on this team, yeah. you've already got a quarterback that's thrown for 8,000 yards in Dylan yep. Gabriel. So you've got an actual quarterback. You've got two running backs who can play. We've seen Marcus Majors whenever he gets game. he put he, he He's done well, and you got Eric Gray to go with him. So you've got two good running backs. The wide receivers, I mean, Theo Weiss is back. We 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 know that wide receiver wise, they'll always be fine. Oklahoma's always fine at wide receiver. That's the one thing. If they're always gonna be okay at, they're always gonna be okay on offense at the wide receiver position. Yeah. And they always have a tendency of getting a good line. They bring, you know, still have the same coach. So offensively, I don't I think this team may actually take a step up because looking at the numbers, and people mm. were showing this, and this is the reason why Stewart was saying what he said. And this is why I agree with him on OU being out outside of the fact I like them being underdogs because in 20 in the 2020 season they were ranked 19th the year before they went seven and five didn't do very well uh, in Stoops first year but then the next year they went undefeated and won a national championship I don't think that's going to be the yeah. scenario here with Venables I think they're going to have success early this is why the defense is going to be completely different than what it's been in years past it's going to go back to those mm -hmm. old defensive setups Venables and them in the in the signing of players focus, you could tell majority was defensive guys. They knew the offensive guys are going to be fine because Levy had he's uh, or helped orchestrate some top five offenses. So mm -hmm. we ain't got to worry about them putting up numbers. They're going to put up yards. They're going to put up numbers. Defense. What is that going to look like? The one thing that I've, I gave props to Alex Grinch for in his coaching is that he taught getting turnovers and OU improved on turnovers from years past. Especially this past year, they were they were really ball hawking. I think that Venables will do a better job with that moving forward. His team's going to focus on getting those turnovers, and they're going to focus yeah. on getting those sacks, getting those stops. This defense is going to look completely different, and I think with their coaching tutelage and with Schmitty out there getting them in actually in shape before the season starts instead of during the season. I'm not saying this team will go 13 and 0. They possibly can. Mm -hmm. They could sneak their way in going undefeated this year just because the coaching staff is set up 
a, it set up to be more successful than I've seen with a lot of other schools. You see what I'm saying? Like I saw success mm-hmm. coming out of Josh Heupel at Tennessee just because of the way that he put together his team. Their offense was one of the tops in the SEC, as I expected. Their problem was defense, and that was the thing that I thought was going to be the flaw. Venables is a defensive guy, so that's going to be the focus. Offensively, Levy has orchestrated some top offenses. And Yvonne, like I said, they've got a quarterback that's thrown for 8,000 career yards. They don't have a guy that hasn't not thrown. The other guys haven't thrown a college football pass. He has thrown a lot of them. I think that's mm-hmm. going to be the saving grace for this team. But it's a good thing to have this bulletin board material. You want to have something to say they don't believe in you. Venables can point to that. But hey, guys, maybe way too early. They don't believe in you. Let's see what the AP post says when the season starts. Hey, guys, they mm-hmm. don't believe in you. What are you guys going to do about it? Then they can prove their point. See, you know, it's like your your optimism uh, makes me – I'm a little bit sideways about your optimism, but like I just said, no one truly knows right. what this team can be or how good they can be. So they could go 13-0 and just as likely as they could go 8-5. and I don't see them winning less than eight or nine games. Oh, yeah. But – it's kind of hard for me to see a pathway to being 13 and 0 mm-hmm. when this is a completely different team, but that could be the very reason why they do go 13 and 0 is because nobody knows what this team is. Nobody's going to really know how to prepare for them. And by the time the other offensive coordinators, defensive coordinators in the conference figure it out, they're going to, it's season's already going to be over and they will have already steamrolled you. So I mean, yeah, there are a lot of things to be optimistic about. I'm more cautiously optimistic. You're more optimistic, optimistic. <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm a cautious optimist as well. A lot of things. Uh, in this scenario, yeah. yeah, and in this scenario, similar to what we've talked about, even just me and you about this, there's it feels like there's something special brewing here. We can talk about yeah. that a little bit more as well in a bit. Mm-hmm. So, so, yeah, okay, that's a good point. So, 